Hello, Great Soft. Welcome to the Great Soft Mathematics Euclidean Geometry Sessions. And today uh, we are on session three. And I'm just going to introduce to you this new theorem. And it's called Triangles with Corresponding Sides Theorem and with um, Similarity. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's, let's just take a look at the content outline uh like i said today uh we'll be doing our session three and we want to focus on triangles with corresponding sides right so it's it's actually unit five here but it's our session three obviously and it's triangles with proportional sides and we'll also be doing uh similarity so these are the two textbooks we're going to be using it's mind the gap uh mathematics study guide and also platinum mathematics learners book okay okay uh let's let's now go into the theorem so this theorem uh, it's actually a converse theorem of the theorem that we did in session uh two don't forget that in session two we did a theorem that state that if uh if two triangles are equiangular then their corresponding sides will be in the same proportion and the triangles will be similar right so that was uh the theorem we did in session two for equiangular triangles to say if angles between the triangles are equal then uh their corresponding sides then will be in the same proportion and those triangles will be similar so this is a converse theorem and uh, it's about triangles with uh, corresponding sides. Okay. Okay. So when we say this is a converse theorem, we, we are saying now from the actual theorem, they, they actually, uh, it, it's like a converse. They are starting their, their statement from, from the end, from what we had to prove in that theorem, and then going back to the given information. Hence, is now called triangles with corresponding sides right okay so this theorem states that if two triangles have their sides in the same proportion you see it's now different from the one for session two because for session two it started by saying if two triangles are equiangular that is have their corresponding uh, 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 angles being the same uh, uh, but here they are saying if two triangles now have their sides in the same proportion right then what will happen their corresponding angles will be equal and the triangles will be similar okay so it's very simple they're just basically telling you that if you have two triangles and you find that their corresponding sides are in the same proportion what does it mean uh we said when sides are in the same proportion it means that the ratios of the sides will be the the same so that's it so if 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 you find that you have two triangles and you calculate the ratio of the sides and you are finding that that ratio is the same then what can you conclude then the corresponding angles the corresponding angles in between the triangles right uh, uh, will be equal will be equiangular it will be the same and obviously the two triangles will be similar so that's what the theorem is stating so the given information from this theorem is that we have uh, corresponding sides in the same proportion in other words the this side here we can say a b over it's corresponding with what with d e it will be the same as the ratio of that other side a c over what over d f which will be the same as what as b c over what over ef so they are saying in a in true triangles if you find that their corresponding sides are in the same proportion what can you conclude therefore we can conclude that let me write conclusion we can conclude that The corresponding angles are the same it means that we can conclude that angle a is equals to angle d right angle a is equals to angle d we can also conclude that angle b is equals to angle 
E, right? Angle B is equals to angle E. And also we can conclude that angle C is equals to angle F, right? So that is what the theorem is saying. And also we can therefore conclude that triangle ABC is similar to triangle D. E, F. So this is what the theorem is stating. Very simple, very basic. If two triangles have their corresponding sides in the same proportion, that's the given information, then what will happen? Then their corresponding angles will be the same. And also the two triangles are what? Are similar. So let's let's just quickly go and look uh, at the proof and how we can really prove uh, this theorem. Okay. Okay, uh, let, let us now look at the proof and you must learn this proof obviously for examination because they can take one of these theorems and they, they can say proof. So what does the theorem state again? It says if we have two triangles and their corresponding sides are in the same proportion, then those two triangles will also be equiangular and hence they will be similar. Okay. So the given information here is that their sides are in the same proportion. They say AB over PQ is equals to AC over PR, which is equals to BC over QR. Can you see? So their sides are in proportion. Then they are saying, let us prove that required to prove RTP there, required to prove that indeed if their corresponding sides are in the same proportion, then also the angles will be equal. So we have to prove that angle A will be equal to angle P, angle B will be equal to angle Q, and angle C will be equal to angle R. So this is what we are required to prove, okay? So if we want to prove this, definitely when we prove every theorem, we have to start with construction, right? So we're gonna say construction and now in this theorem, how do you do your construction? What you do, you go on the smaller triangle and you construct another triangle that will be similar to the bigger triangle. Okay, let me repeat that. How do you construct? You go to a smaller triangle and you construct another triangle that will be similar, that will have its angles being the same as the angles of the bigger triangle. So to do this, we have to mark a point here, somewhere here, and I'm just gonna name this point M, right? We are going to mark a point M, or you can use any of the letters that you want so long as they're not in any of those triangles. So I'm marking a point M such that I can join QM and also join what? And also join MR so that this angle here and I'll call it Q1 so this is Q2 so they will have to write Q2 like that and this is R2 then this one has to be R2 such that angle Q1 will be equals to angle B and angle R1 will be equals to angle C and angle M will be equals to angle A so what we do in, in the construction, as you can see, it's very clear. We construct another smaller triangle on the smaller triangle, obviously, that will have its angles being equiangular to the angles of the bigger triangle. Okay, so that's basically what you do. And on, on my construction, I, I just need to write it also here to say I marked point M, M, right? To form, to form triangle QMR such that, such that I'm marking a point M to form triangle QMR such that angle Q1 will be equal to what? Will be equal to angle B. And angle R1 will be equal to angle C. And angle M will be equals to angle A. So that is basically what you do in your construction. You construct a smaller triangle on a smaller triangle that is similar to the, to the bigger triangle. So that is the construction. 
so now let's go to the proof proof now okay let's go to the proof okay so in order to prove this theorem now you can see that you have made two triangles to be similar can you see that now you can see that triangle i can conclude that therefore i can see that triangle a b c is now similar to triangle m q r right by by construction so we just made them to be similar by what by construction and we can also say because of angle 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 okay so now we can see that the bigger triangle now abc is now similar to triangle mqr right by by construction so from similarity this is similarity right similarity from similarity we can move to to proportionality and and i want you to always have this in mind that from similarity we can now move to what to proportionality right so from similarity we can now go to to proportionality what do i mean what do i mean it means that because we are saying triangle abc is similar to triangle mqr we can now make our proportionality right to say ab right over what over mq it will be the same as what to be the same as bc over what over over qr and this will be the same as what as ac over what over mr can you see over mr and why are we going there it is because from similarity those two triangles are similar so your reason that you will give will just indicate to them that those two triangles are similar so we can go to proportionality okay be very very careful when you move from similarity to proportionality right so make sure that these arrangements here of the letters are in a way are uh, ordered in a way that this uh, angle was equal to this angle so take a look at angle a and angle m they were what they were equal right take a look at angle b and angle q b and q here on our construction they were equal can you see and also angle what angle c and angle up r they were what they were equal so you have to ensure that they are ordered in a way that those angles were equal there in uh, in your similarity okay so now we have we have just gotten another proportionality take a look at this proportionality and look at the proportionality that we were given there uh, look at it uh, here's the proportionality that we were given and i want you to see something there is something similar between the two proportionality can you see can you see that in in both the proportionality we have bc over qr can you see the one in the given information and this one that we just got after proving similarity between the two triangles by construction can you see that we have bc over qr in the two proportionality what does it tell you it tells you that the two proportionality can now be equated because both of them are equals to bc over over qr so what i can do now and what i can advise you to do in this step is now that you know that the two proportionality have something in common and 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 they are equal then you can just equate those uh those ratios that are sort of like the same right what do i mean for example i'm going to take a b over m q and i'm going to equate it with something that also have a b there so i'll equate it with a b over p q because they are similar both of them are equals to b c over q r so in this step what i will really do is to say a b over m q will be equals to i check on the given information what is sort of like similar to this one we also have a b over p q so they are equal because both of them this proportionality equals to b c over over q r can you see both of them are equals to b c over q r so that's why i can equate them 
But from this statement that I just made, I can conclude something. On top, I have A, B. Can you see? I have A, B, A, B. It means that because on top the numerators are equal, also we can equate the, the denominator. They are the same. If you cross multiply, you realize they are the same. So we can just basically conclude that therefore MQ is equals to what? Is equals to PQ. We have proven something here, and I want us to really go back in our triangle and and indicate what we have just proven. Now we have proven that MQ, here is it, it's this line, right? Is equals to what? Is equals to PQ. Can you see? We have just proven that. And just go back on your triangle and indicate it. It will be very useful. Let's go back to our proportionality again and take a look at something. Look at this one here. AC over MR, right? AC over MR. It has a friend on the given information. Can you see? We also have AC, but it is over PR. It means we can equate the two to say, uh, let me just write it maybe on top uh, because of space. So we can now say AC over MR will be equal to what? Will be equal to AC on the given information over PR. Why are we equating these two? Because both of them have BC over QR. They are both equated to BC over QR. Because now I can write both are equals to BC over over QR. So that is why we are equating. Them. Can you see? So now look at something here. Uh, now we have AC, AC on top on the numerator. What can you conclude? You can equate what also the, the denominator there. Okay, so I can therefore conclude that indeed also MR will be equals to PR. Can you see? MR will be equals to PR. And I'm just going to go back to the triangle and indicate this, uh, that MR is equals to PR. MR, here is it. It will be equals to what? It will be equals to? PR and I just indicated it there. Okay, so now take a look at something. We are we are done. Once once you have done that and you have proven that this side is equal to this, this side is equal to this. It's gonna be very simple to prove that their angles are equal, right? How can you take a look at these two smaller triangles here? This one and this one. You have just proven that their sides are equal. Can you see? And also they have a common side. Can you conclude something from the two of them? Obviously. We can conclude that therefore triangle PQR is congruent, not similar. It is what? It is congruent to triangle MQR. Why am I saying therefore triangle PQR is congruent to triangle MQR? It is because we have the sides, sides, sides that are equal. And we have just proven this above, right, that their sides are equal, right? So basically, what you are doing in this theorem, when you construct that other smaller triangle, you are trying to prove that that smaller triangle will also be congruent to that one. So that all the angles of that those two small triangles may be equal. And if they are equal, they will definitely be also equal to the bigger triangle. And you will see how. Okay. So... Now we have just proven that the two triangles are congruent. And what does it mean when we say triangles are congruent? Congruency means that they have the same shape and the same size. What do we mean? It means that they will have all their length, all their sides being the same, and also all their angles being what? Being the same. That's what congruency suggests, right? that all their sides and all their angles will be the same. So from congruency, we can now deduce that therefore I can conclude that angle P is equal to angle M, right? And I can also conclude that angle Q1, or let me write it here, angle Q2 is equal to angle what? Angle Q1, right? And I can also conclude that angle R1, I mean R2, will be equal to angle what? Angle R2, I mean R1, from, from those two triangles. And I'm concluding this is because I'm getting them from where? From similarity. I'll just write that thing there in that brackets. From 
similarity, I can conclude that. Can you see? So after making this conclusion, let's go back to the construction. Look at your construction. In your construction, you just made angle Q1 to be equal to angle B. Can you see? It means that when there is angle Q1 here, we're going to replace by angle what? By angle B because they are the same. You just made them by construction. Or uh, can you see? Or maybe I can start here so that you cannot be confused. Angle P is equal to angle M, right? But from your construction, you said angle M is equal to angle what? Angle A. So it means that when there is angle M, you can replace by angle A. Can you see? You can replace because angle M is equal to angle A. Also, where there is Q1, can you see Q1 in your construction is equal to angle B. So where there is Q1, you can replace by angle angle B. And lastly, R, 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 R1 is equal to C. So where there is R1, I'm just going to replace by what? By, by C. Can you see? You have now proven what was needed to say also these angles here because they are the same of these triangles here and this angle of this triangle we made them to be the same as this one we can now conclude that also for this one they are the same as as that one although the theorem quite uh, to prove it 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 might seem maybe it's itself like having a lot of step but you you just need to follow this procedure i think it will be much simpler as 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 as, as much as you, you get to practice it. Okay, so now let me just explain again how did we prove this theorem. We first, we first started by, by construction, right, on the smaller triangle. You have to construct a what? A, a, a triangle that will be similar to the bigger triangle. That is to say its angles will be the same as the bigger triangle. After doing that, you can conclude that the two triangles are similar. From similarity, you move to what? to proportionality right and from proportionality you just observe now what is similar between this proportionality and the one i was given in the given information then you you start to find that uh, from those proportionality you can deduce that this side is the same as this side this one is the same as this one then you can prove congruency between the two to say this all these angles in this triangle pqr will be the same as all these angles in this mqr but initially you had made the angles of mqr to be the same as the bigger triangle meaning you can conclude that indeed the angles in pqr will be the same as the angles in uh, angle uh, in triangle abc because both of them are equal to the angles in that smaller triangle so after doing this we can also conclude that therefore triangle abc is similar to triangle P, Q, R. Can you see? By angle, angle, angle. Because we can see their angles are the same. So this is basically how you prove this theorem. And I hope uh, once you, 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 uh, you, you, you listen to this video and also repeatedly listening to it, getting this sort of idea how you can prove this theorem, you'll be able to solve it also. Okay. Okay, uh, let's let's take a look at this quite uh, tricky example and, and let's see how it goes. So, you are given that AC and AD intersect perpendicularly at B and BE is 6, AB is 8, BD is 12, CD is 15 and it has been represented in the diagram 1.1. We are supposed to prove that triangle ABE, it is this triangle, is uh, similar to triangle DBC is this one okay so if we need to prove this obviously you can see that they've given you the sides there right obviously if you can prove that the sides are in the same proportion then you can conclude that they are they are similar uh, hence from from the theorem that we just did uh, okay so you can now see that in this triangle ABE, you don't have all sides, right? Can you see that you don't have all sides? So it's going to be quite hard for us to, to prove using sides in proportion because we don't have 
all sides. So the first step that we can do is to go and calculate those uh, remaining sides, their length, so that we can now do our proportionality in a much proper way, right? But they've given you something that will help you. They give you a triangle and they give you 90 degrees, right? So you must definitely think of, of Pythagoras theorem uh, to say that uh, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared, right? So obviously if I want AE, I'll say because AE is my hypotenuse, AE squared to be equal to 8 squared plus 6 squared. And this is by Pythagoras, right? Pythagoras, okay, Pythagoras. Uh, then I can solve for AE very fast by applying root of 8 squared plus 6 squared, right? Okay, let's get our length. I won't say plus or minus because length is always positive, right? Uh, yeah. Then I'm getting 10 centimeter as our AE. I'll put 10 there. Also from this triangle that we have to prove similarity, there is one side that is remaining, right? I can first start by calculating it. So we have 90 degrees, so it will be hypotenuse squared, 15 squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared. Then I can get uh, my BC, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so it will, it will be equal to uh, BC squared, right? BC squared. So, but I can apply the square root quickly so that we can get the answer. Uh, so it's root of 15 squared minus 12 squared, right? Minus 12 squared is going to give me 9. So my BC is 9. So when there is BC, I can write 9. Okay. So now we can go, because we have all the sides, right? We can now go and prove uh, 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 that the two triangles are similar. By what? By, by, by calculating the ratios of the corresponding side and to see if the ratios are the same. Then we can make that conclusion. Okay. So look at our AE. Our AE is corresponding to what? To DC, this side. So it's AE over DC. I'm just going to get the ratio there. It's 10 over 15. Then also 10 over 15 is going to give us what? 2 over 3 if we simplify that. Uh, 2 over 3. So that's the ratio of the first side. The second side, AB, it's corresponding with what? It's corresponding with... Uh, with with db yeah i think it's corresponding with db right obviously a a b is corresponding with what with this one with db so say a b over db then we calculate 8 over 12 then this will definitely give us 8 over 12 it will also give us 2 over 3 okay looking good uh the last one it's e b this side which is obviously corresponding to what to uh bc uh eb over bc this will be uh, what is our eb is six and our bc we calculated it as nine so six divided by nine it's also two over three can you see two over three perfect so now we can see that we can conclude that therefore AE over DC is equal to AB over DB, which is equal to EB over BC, because both of them are equals to 2 over 3. So now we have proven that the corresponding sides are in the same proportion, and according to the theorem, if corresponding sides are in the same proportion, then the two triangles are equiangular and therefore they are similar so we can conclude that therefore triangle a b e is similar to triangle d b c right why are we saying the the two triangles are similar because the sides are in proportion the sides are in proportion so that is why we are saying they are similar so that's that's what the, re, the the theorem really states okay okay let's now move to 1.2 uh 
and it says prove that AECD is a cyclic quadrilateral. Uh, they want you to prove that AECD is a qu cyclic quadrilateral. I think this is going to be much easier uh, because we have just proven that this triangle is similar to this triangle, right? So if the two triangles are similar and we just proven that by uh, getting the ratios of the corresponding sides and we realize the ratios of the corresponding sides are the same and we said, okay, the two triangles are similar. Okay, so now we need to prove that AECD is a cyclic quad, right? So what you can do, you can see that this diagram is sort of like forming a bow tie uh, or is it called a bow tie or something like that and we can know from a bow tie what we can prove if we can prove that this angle is the same as this angle or someone can say this angle is the same as this angle then we can conclude the two triangles as i mean the the, the thing is a cyclic quad because uh, angles that are subtended by the same chord or that are on the same segment they're actually equal right so that's that remember how to prove a uh, cyclic quadrilateral in in grade 11 i think you were taught uh, those three things that you must look for in order to prove whether something is a cyclic quadrilateral or not i don't i'm not sure if it's four or three things okay but this is one of them uh, so now that we have proven that the two triangles are similar then obviously we can therefore conclude that angle a is equals to angle d and this is because triangle abe is similar to triangle dbc we have already proven in 1.1 that the two triangles are similar then we can deduce also their corresponding angles are equiangular or the same um, and also i can say angle e is equals to angle C because triangle ABE is similar to triangle DBC. Okay, then now I can conclude that therefore AECD is a is a cyclic quad, right? It's a cyclic quad. Why am I saying that? Because we have angles in same segment angles in the same segment are uh, equal so we are getting that angles in the same segment they are equal so um so that's why the the the, the thing is exactly quite now okay great off uh, i want to waste much of your time maybe trying to explore different different examples with you so what i can advise you is that uh Go and look for past papers uh, and, and, and be solving more and more questions related to these theorems so that you can conceptualize them. Because really in maths, it's, it's not about you being taught, but you going and practice. As they say, practice makes perfect. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. That's it for me. Uh, and uh, just tune in. Uh, for 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 the next session uh which is going to be session four i think that it, that is our last session on euclidean geometry where we'll be focusing on that other last theorem okay otherwise that's all for me and goodbye